Haymaker Coffee Company was established in 2021 to create the best coffee to fuel the underdogs who perseveres, who hustles, and have the give-it-all mentality to achieve their American dream. Haymaker Coffee only roasts top quality, specialty-grade coffee beans resulting in brews that satisfies those who demand every drop from their coffee and day. If you work hard, run hard, fight hard, and play hard, we have your coffee right here. And we're back, Stripe Show podcast. On a Tuesday, I'm your host, Travis Fulton. Thank you for making us part of your day. We're having some microphone issues here. You know, it's like one of those days you wake up, you go push the power button on your computer, you push the power button on your microphone, you push the power button on your mixer, and like, huh, that's not powering up today. How come? Usually when I push that red button, everything comes on and, well, it didn't. So we've got that. We're kind of patching some things together here. So hopefully it sounds just fine on your end because we got a you great must, show. You must we have got gotten into the Glen, the Glen Fittich. Yeah. Well, you can see the Glen Fittich, right? And you, you must have got into it before the show. <laughs> well, well, I knew you were coming on. And let's go ahead and bring in our guest here this week because he is fresh off of the uh, team finals down in Doral uh, for the Live Golf Series as their season comes to an end. You can see. The flag in the backdrop smash signed by all four players. He has beaten the bookie. How you doing, dude? I'm doing great. Um, you know, feeling refreshed. My legs, actually, my legs are feeling better today. After you know, you walked the entire course, you know, for five days straight. Um, you really get an appreciation for how fast golfers, you know, while they're playing these tournaments, actually walk. I mean, these guys haul ass yeah. while they're playing the course and. Um, it was fun. Um, it was. It, it wasn't too hot, which was nice. You know, um, you know, the Florida weather can sometimes be brutal, but we got a pretty nice weekend with not not much humidity. Uh, we avoided any rain. Yeah, which was beautiful. But um, it, it was fun. You know, couldn't couldn't have asked for a better time. And I know people talk about the crowds like not being great for living stuff, but I mean, it was. You know, especially on Sunday, there was like a very like raucous crowd. I mean, it was it was fun. And, um, you know, it was fun to watch team golf as opposed to just individual. Yeah. I actually think going forward, you know, I, I used to not be a big fan of the Zurich Classic, you know, the PGA team event. But the last few years, I've actually loved it. Right. I think going forward, the PGA needs to incorporate like maybe a couple more team events because it just makes it so much more fun, you know, where every shot matters. And I think, it, you know, I think events like this definitely help golf if you're a fan of just watching golf. All right. So let me ask you this, because you're, you're down in southern Florida and uh, beating the book here, joining us on a Stripe Show podcast on a Tuesday, Tuesday brought to you by About Golf Simulators. And we're going to get to uh, some our, our favorite picks here at Mayakoba here in a second. Um, some some win tickets, some top 20s, first round leaders. You know how we do it here on a Tuesday. Mayakoba, better field, thank goodness, than what we saw last week at the <laughs> Butterfield Bermuda Championship. But beat the book, you were at uh, you were at the event. Um, the live golf event down in Miami. You've also been to the PGA tour Honda classic as well. Give me the comparison, you know, give me your, your true thoughts here. The experience of both. What, what, what were your takeaways? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, those are just the Florida events I've been to, but I've been to a, a few more PGA events, but you know, the Honda, I would say it's just different. Like live is a more fun, like laid back atmosphere where, you know, when you go to the Honda Championship, right, you're not going to have much access to the golfers, really. You're not going to be following a ton of golfers around the course through 12 hours of the day, right, all day. You know, if you take your wife or, you know, you take your kid, you're likely not going to be there all day because, you know, you're not going to want to stay there for that long with your kid or your, your, your wife's likely not going to want to stay there the entire time, right? Um, I, I think this, the, the live was great because, you know, the event started at 12, 15 every day. It's over by like four 30, unless there was like a playoff. Mm -hmm. um, and the fans are comp compacted on, you know, onto like less holes because there's less holes starting out. Right. So you get bigger crowds on each hole than you would get. Like, like I talked to you, you know, if Chase, if Chase Kepka was playing uh, the Honda classic, you know, maybe there'd be, you know, 20 people, you know, watching on that hole, um, you know, say he was paired with Peter Yuling, you know, something like that. 
Whereas here, there's a couple hundred watching because it's more compacted. The team scoring, you know, you have more of the team's fans there also watching. Um, and I like how it just, the round gets over with in like four and a half hours. And the event's done that day in like four and a half hours. As opposed to waking up early in the morning, staying there until later in the day and doing it again for a whole weekend. As a fan, that's really tough on a fan. And like I said, what stuck out to me most is like you really have a lot of access. Like if you're a, a golfer and you don't have like you're a PGA fan, right? If you want to go behind the ropes, I think it's like five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, right? I've done it in Albany in the Bahamas for the Hero World Challenge. I think it was like $5,000 each. Um, if you want to do that at a PGA event, it's costly, right? Say you have a young kid and you want to do that, it's very costly. Well, here you can just buy a ticket, go out to the holes and you know, the, the golfers are a lot more accessible. They'll talk to you and stuff. Like, Pat Perez is walking through the crowd on a bunch of the holes. Like, he wasn't even going. Like, he was just going under the rope, like, through the crowd to the next hole. Um, and you really would never see that at a PGA event. So, I thought, like, even from the security was more laid back and stuff like that. Um, but I think if you want access to golfers, I think, you know, you won't find a better place than a live event because of just the laid back atmosphere. Um, you know, PJ is a little more uptight. The security is going to be a little more, a little more tighter at the PJ events. Yeah. Um, so I think if you're looking for like value to meet golfers and stuff, I think the live event is definitely, uh, you know, one ups the PJ event there. Now, one of your clients, or I should say customers or friends or whatever it is, uh, Chase Kepka, who is part of that team on, on smash with his brother Brooks and, um, you know, Chase, kind of helps you get the, the media yeah. access to the event last week, uh, which, you know, is giving you a little more access than some of the, you know, general mission out there, right? Getting close to some of these guys, which is always is kind of fun. Do you feel like as you watch these players and being the tournaments, do you feel like they're more laid back? Do you feel like um, they're having more fun out there? Let's call it what it is, right? I mean, yeah. these guys have taken – their shots and I've been critical of, of live in certain ways, but I've been open-minded. I like a lot of the things that they're doing that you speak to that it's over in four and a half hours. I like, I, I like the fact that I know what the field is going to be every single week. You're leading with your stars. You, you avoid, um, you, you know, a field like we saw last week in Bermuda, which is just God awful. I mean, it's just like, I, I hate to say it, but you know, it's just awful. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of things I do like about it. But it is interesting to me, right? Because we know we know like that that money can buy a lot of things, and and we know like that's the the main reason that these guys are there is they're making a boatload of money. I mean, Dustin Johnson, what thirty five million to this point? Pat Perez is making, you know, quadruple what he would make on the PGA Tour, if not more. Chase Kepka is probably in the three or four million range. I mean, these guys are getting paid absurd amount of money. But with that said, all right. Are, are you willing to look past it a little bit and say, are they, it, the atmosphere is more lax. Are they having a little bit more fun with um, live golf as it is in the way that they're presenting it to the public? Yeah. You know, I, one of my clients is, uh, you know, works with Chase like business wise for golf. So mm -hmm. he got me in touch with Chase and then, you know, we just became friends and um, you know, it's nice, you know, when you go to these events, because, like, you know, like Chase, you know, on a PGA season, like, for example, Tom Hoagie just finished like top 10, like at the, you know, at the FedEx, you know, FedEx standings this past season at the tour championship. I think he made like 6 million this year, right? This past year, which is great. It's, I mean, that's yeah. a great year for a PGA pro, right? I think Chase made like four and a half, five million 5 million since the Boston event on, on the live tour. And to his credit, like he's playing good golf. Like he got 14th. Um, their team event, they just got third place this past weekend. So he made one and a half million. Um, and they're definitely more like laid back. That's yeah. for sure. And I, I like, I think it's not just, they're not more laid back because of like, they don't want to play good golf. Right. Cause you know, you see it up close. These guys are very competitive with each other, especially in the team events. I think it's more the atmosphere, you know, you have the music playing like in the back, the music's not like overbearing, like on these holes, right. It's just playing in the background and stuff. Um, it kind of takes, I feel like it kind of takes some pressure off like that. Um, and I like how you said how they start all close together. And, you know, which was really cool for me is like when you're, when you're out there, like you see their families and stuff like Pat Perez's wife was there, some of his friends. 
I was walking with Bob Kepka, you know, Brooks and, yeah. and Ch Chase's father for the entire week, right? It was awesome for him because when a day started, Brooks would be teeing off on hole one and Chase would be on hole three. So he could go back and forth watching both, right, at the same time. Whereas at a normal PGA tournament, they're just going to be showing Brooks on TV. So usually he just follows Chase, right, because he would watch Brooks on TV. Well, this time he got to watch both, you know, with his wife and stuff. I think it's, you know, you sometimes you put yourself in like the, the, the shoes of like the parents and stuff and, and their friends and stuff. It makes it a lot easier for their friends and, and family to follow. Um, but the atmosphere was definitely more laid back. Like yeah. Patrick Reed, I know like, you know, a lot of people aren't very big fans of Patrick Reed and stuff, but met, talked to Patrick Reed for a few minutes, a very nice guy. Um, you know, like he was carrying like a thing of 10 towels and I was like, I you know, people probably wouldn't picture Patrick Reed carrying like 10 towels for the team out to the putting green, right? Like that's, when I saw that, I was like, wow. Like, and he was talking to me during it, you know, he's like, yeah, I'd shake your hand, but I got these towels on my hand. And I was like, yeah, they're making you pull like rookie duty. And then I actually, I, I saw Sergio, I talked to Sergio Garcia on the putting green. And I said, you know, you catch, you know, I've given Sergio Garcia shit before. Like, you know, this guy seems when he's hitting his club into the sand and stuff, doesn't seem like a very nice guy. I talked to him on the putting green. He was very nice. He took pictures with like 50 people. I said, you know, online, they try to kill you. you know, they, they say like, you're not very nice and stuff. You have an attitude. I go, but you've been very nice. He's like, oh, he's like, I appreciate that. You can't trust what you read online sometimes, you know, nice guys. And I whoa, just think whoa, 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 whoa. The atmosphere. It, it, it has like nothing that. to trust what you read. Sergio, it's all behavior based. Takes it. See, that's what, that's what, that's what I'm going to stop you there for a second. That's what bothers me about some of these guys, right? Is just take some ownership. Like, Sergio, it's it's no one's making this up, fabricating that you spit in the cup and that you have a tantrum in a bunker and um, you know all these things. I mean, this is you. We saw it. You did it. Just take some ownership of it. If 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 they would just do that and show a little humility, like it would make them much more likable. But they don't, and that's why Sergio is who he is. All right, continue. And I don't think there's you know many. Go I mean, I don't think there's really any guy on live that would say they, they didn't do it for the money, for example. Like, right. I mean, you look at a young guy, like we were walking with Turk Pettit, um, whose girlfriend, by the way, is like ridiculous, right? This, I don't know what Turk Pettit's doing, but he's doing something right. But, you know, you got a guy like Turk Pettit who's making probably life-changing money now that he wouldn't have been making on the PGA Tour, right? Um, which allows them to play more golf and stuff like that. So, like for, for Chase, for example, right right now, it makes it a lot easier for Chase to to go out and play the Asian tour and, you know, cover all those expenses with the money he's made from living. This is how this has allowed Chase to hire like he's hired like a mental coach, like a guy who helps his mobility and stuff. I mean, this is allowing him to pay for stuff that he couldn't have paid for probably before, you know, so. Um, did, you know, really, did Brooks did Brooks buy Chase a Lamborghini? Is that a tr is that true? Yeah. So Brooks told Chase that he would get him a you know if he won on the uh, tour this week, this year he would buy him a Lamborghini and he won like three weeks ago uh, the last individual event before the team finale and um, he actually bought Chase like a white Lambert a Lamborghini Urus um, which is pretty cool because when Chase was you know showing me the picture I was like. You know what kind of car did you have before? You know, well, just a Tahoe. You know, like going from a Tahoe to a, to a Lamborghini. So it's pretty cool. Um, and you know, when you're, I liked it mostly like for the team event because when you're walking with Chase and his dad and stuff, and you know yeah. Jason Kolkrak and Jason Kolkrak's family there. Um, you know, and Brooks had lost to Harold Warner in his in his uh, heads up matchup on Thursday, so they needed to win the other two matches to advance to the next round. And, you know, Brooks, like, I think Brooks lost like four or five holes to go. He came over to watch Chase and you could see how intense he was. Like when Chase needed to chip out of the, you know, to make an out from the bunker on the final hole, basically to win it. Mm -hmm. um, you could see like their brotherly bond right there and stuff. Like, I, I think it's really cool, like how they can play together as brothers on the same team and stuff. I mean, so I feel like it's more of like a family yeah. event also. And I think that really makes it, uh, you know, cool as well. And these guys are definitely like, like Pat Perez is out there. Like I can tell you following Pat Perez on Sunday, like he wasn't like messing around and stuff. Like this was a guy who was out there. Like uh, he was a gamer. He knew there was like $4 million on the line for himself. And he was just out there like gaming. And, um, I, you know, I think 
you know, you really see how competitive these guys are close up and stuff. And yeah. I definitely don't think the money has killed their competitiveness at all because they want to win more money. You know, anybody who has money wants to win more money, but I don't think there's many golfers out there like on the PGA tour that will tell you that they didn't, you know, that one of the, obviously one of the biggest motives for moving to live was money. And I think that's fine. I mean, anybody, like I was talking to them about, like if anybody had a job and their competitor offered them a 500% raise to come to a, to a new job, I think anybody would take it, you know, um, unless they were like a mega billionaire. Right? Yeah. Because at, at the end of the day, people need money, especially in times like this with the market, the market's doing terribly, the econ our economy is doing terrible, inflation is skyrocketing and stuff, gas is expensive. I mean, people need to make more money to keep up with the times. So I don't think anybody can blame these guys for taking the money. And most guys will admit to you like, yeah, you know, we did it for the money. Um, at first, Liv was telling these guys like, listen, like when you do press conferences and stuff, don't like basically like don't say you're doing it for the money, right? Like this, you know, say come up with another reason, right? Like this just sounds bad. But uh, when HV3 joined, basically HV3 said, you know, basically like, I took the money, of course, anybody would. I want to set my family up and stuff. Then, like, Liv kind of said, okay, well, you know, you can just say you're, you came here for whatever yeah, reasons you want. It is what it is. I mean, see, that's, that's one of the things that is just very shady to me about Liv also is that, okay, yeah, we're so – it's more accessible. We're open to the players. We're going to leave. So, like, a lot of those things, like, on the course experience, I think, is is good, right? Like, in the way they're – knocking the edge off a little bit per se, but then, you know, on the other side, they're controlling the narrative a hundred percent. I'm like, you know, like we've had Taylor Gooch, Jason Kokrak on the pod multiple times when they're on the PGA tour, they can't do it now because they're part of Liv. So I, like to me, why? I mean, cause they want to control the narrative of what's being said about Liv. So like, I don't know, that's just shady to me. Um, yeah. You know, and, and the tour PGA tour gets criticized for that. Right. And controlling the narrative and those types of things. And, and, and I think that you should be able to speak willingly. Yeah, I took it for the money. This is why I did it for my family, this and that. And okay, so now you're telling me I can't do interviews and I can't do my own social yeah. and I can't like, I don't know. That that just that just hits me the wrong way. You know, it just feels very shady uh, to me. I like, think it's like you, a, it's a back and forth that? right now. It's a back and forth now between Liv and PGA. Like, you know, what's bothered me for years about the PGA is like, I'll, I'll post a video like of a highlight, right? Like, Bryson DeChambeau holding out from the bunker, right? For Eagle, right? I'll post a video and five hours later, it's like PJ has taken down, like requested your video come down because of copy. Like this is, a, I'm posting a video of Bryson DeChambeau holding out for Eagle from the Fort Worth classic, right? That like literally nobody, nobody probably saw this shot live, right? I'm posting it. Like, you would think you would want people to see it, like get out to the masses because nobody else is going to watch it otherwise but the PJ has kind of been controlling that. And also like they control their, like they give their PJ gives their media passes to like who they, who they want to give it to and stuff yep. like that. Right. Um, so I think live live is just really doing the same thing. And I don't blame live for like, like there's some other podcasts out there that, I mean, I won't even mention, but I give the guys shit daily. Like all they do is talk bad about live. Right. Yep. And then they complain that, Oh, we couldn't get media access to this week's event. Like I, I literally, like told Greg Norman, like you should never even give these guys media access. Cause why would you like reward somebody for talking trash about your league? Like they're going there with media access, right? They have a cafeteria for the media, right? They get all the food they want. They get the best passes and stuff, the best seats in the game and stuff. It's basically like you're giving them a reward. Um, I feel like that you should do that to people who are like actually like respectable, right? To, to your well, organization. It'd be an opportunity stuff, for yeah. them to, bring them in and show them what they're all about too. Right. Like, you know, yeah. that's, look, I've tried to keep an open mind about it. Um, and I've, I've been, I've given live credit where I feel like it's due. Um, it's just fascinating. We could, we could go on and on. I want to get some picks here. And, and I think they'll grow. Like, I think the one thing that I did see that the, you know, the, everybody that worked for them was like, totally professional from their media people to their, you know, their player relations and stuff. Uh, Greg Norman, I couldn't believe like that's the first time I've seen Greg Norman in person. I couldn't believe how tall he was, like yeah, how how good of shape he's in. I mean, and then Sunday I'm in the club 54. They're serving lamb. They're serving a, a <laughs> tomahawk steak. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm in there with like Wayne Gretzky's in there, Paulie and Gretzky's in there. I mean, it was just a really fun experience. And I think that for an organization running their first year doing something, you could definitely see the difference between this and the difference between a first year, like the XFL running, right? right. Like this was totally professionally done. And I think they'll only get bigger and better going forward. So I hope eventually that, you know, they'll be able to, to work, not work together with the PJ, but just be like, you can play whatever events you want. Like as long as you meet your, as long as you meet requirements for this tour and this tour, you can play whatever crossover events you want. I think it would be cool to have like a live versus PGA pay-per-view. I mean, I think that, I think something like that would be very good for golf. I mean, yeah. you look at, you look at wrestling in the nineties, that's what helped grow wrestling. So yeah. I, think I don't that, think it's a bad idea. Yeah. I really don't. I don't think I really the think it would ever do it, but you know, when I, when I think of, um, of course the four aces wins the event, right. And no one's surprised. They, I mean, when they launched the teams, they were, I think clearly the best team, Dustin Johnson, uh, yeah. Taylor Gooch, good yeah. young player. When he came over, he was in the, uh, I think he was in the top 20 in, in the official world rankings. He was certainly up there in, in the FedEx Cup. Um, and then uh, you got Patrick Reed and and uh, Pat Press, right? So th these four guys dominated, yeah, they, really. And when I think of the four aces, I was, I, I just, I, over the last few weeks, I keep thinking of the four horsemen to go back to your, um, uh, your, your wrestling analogy right remember the four horsemen i mean you start thinking like okay who's rick flair you know i mean yeah. pat perez right i mean obviously rick flair is pat perez who's arn anderson i mean that's that's patrick reed <laughs> i mean like yeah. you just start going down and matching these guys up the four horsemen the four aces i i think look you know I what, was, what was really cool what was really cool about it is like i'll just tell this one funny story like i was walking on like 16 on thursday I was walking with Bob Kepka, who's the nicest guy. He is you can nice. I've met him. Very nice man. He lives in South Florida also. Yep. He has a he has a painting company, right? This is a guy that's still like he's still grinding, right? Like he taught like his kids how to play golf, right? He was a club champion, I think, at his at his golf club and stuff. He told me so many stories about Brooks and Chase growing up, you know, how competitive they are and how they'll still they're still get they still ride each other day to day when they play when they play well when they play bad here it was funny we were going on this par three and before chase you know teed off i was like well i was like hey bob i was like you ever got a hole in one he's like i have five he's like chase has five he's like brooks only has three right he's like brooks is still trying to catch us as we're talking chase hits it like literally bounces six feet i mean six inches from the pin ne nearly aces it i'm like oh chase almost got number six right there and um you know it was, it's just cool. It's different when you walk with their family and stuff, yeah. you know, you, you get a better appreciation, but I like what Liv is doing now, like going like, you know, right now, like live on the teams this year, right? Just they own the teams this year, next year, um, organizations are buying the teams, right? Like, so these, uh, they're like franchising them out. Right. So, um, at the program, they, they walk with a group of investors. They own like a bunch of major league sports teams out on the West coast. Um, I won't say which ones, but, um, they'll be buying these franchises like Smash Golf Club next year. And um, next year, each team is in charge of their own social media um, stuff like that. So I think it's a, uh, I think it's pretty cool. I think as time goes on, I think you'll see the Lib start loosening their loosening their re restrictions for where players can talk about it and stuff like that. So yeah. I think it will only continue to grow. And hopefully, hopefully, like we're seeing with the British Open, how they can play there. Hopefully, yeah. eventually, like all tournaments will be able to do that. But it was great. Um, and I think that there's stuff that PJ can take away from live and also do like more team events, make it more fun for the fans, stuff like that. But it, it was a great, and I had fun and, um, they didn't pay me a dollar to say that, but it was fun. And uh, yeah. you know, I can't, I can't wait to do it again. Hey, it's good. I mean, I, look, I, I, I think you got, you got to listen to all perspectives, right. And that's the problem. I think in today's world, like you, you get set in your ways. This is what I do. This is how, what I like. This is. And then something else comes along and you're like, oh, wow, that's kind of different. It's ruffled your feathers as a competitor. And they're saying some, some weird things. And look, I don't like, there's a lot of things I don't like about it. Right. Yeah. But there is a lot of things I do like about it. And I, I think you have to go down this path and be open-minded. I mean, you have to, like, if, if, if you're not like, what are you doing? I mean, this could, you gotta be a, grow. Very, this could be a very good thing for the game of golf. Who knows? No one really knows like what their commitment level is. They're spending a lot of money. 
they're going to, they, they need to see some money coming back in. So, you know, like Greg Norman rubs me the wrong way a little bit. Like he, he, he's, his bully tactics get a little bit old. Um, so let's see where it goes. I think in, in, in the experience itself, going to the event, um, what's it like, you know, like that's the, th- that's what I, that's why I wanted to have it, have you on and how is it different? And, you know, what, what's the plan from there? Are the players loosening up a little bit, these types of things. So it's always, I think you have to look at it from all perspectives. Now, Glenn Fittich, the world's most awarded single malt scotch whiskey is expertly crafted and made with extraordinary care. Each single malt is a work of perfection. Let's get to a few picks here. And who, who, who designed this week's scores for the Yeah, I know, tour? right? This is actually going to uh, live golf next year in Mexico because Greg Norman did design El Chameleon uh, in Mexico. Worldwide Technology Championship at Mayacoba. Uh, better field this week, thank goodness. Um, no, one, uh, no one really surprised. Seamus Power, I think, although he wasn't playing his best golf coming in last week, won last week. Um, certainly I think one of the class overall, when you look at like the last, you know, a, a bigger sample size rather than just that shorter sample size coming in. Now, Victor Hovland hasn't been a great year for him, but he's won this tournament back to back times, you know, well into the twenties under par, you know, guys are going to be making birdies here. This is a short course, just over 7,000 par 71. Um, but you know, you look at this traditionally, you know, what do you need to do? Well, you gotta have, you gotta put the ball in the fairway here. I mean, accuracy is going to matter here. There's no question. There's courses where you can bomb and gouge, just let it out there in the rough. No big deal here. You better keep it in front of you. You better keep it in the short grass, uh, pass palm. Anytime you hear that, it kind of throws a wrench in things. Um, as far as putting, that's the surface we have in Mexico. You better be able to make some putts because guys are going to be making birdies. And of course, you know, let's sprinkle a little bit on the approach game. So keep me in the fairway. It's not long. A lot of guys have won here in the past that are not long. Graham McDowell's of the world. Um, and you better be able to make some putts and, and have a good putting week. So, you know, we, we look at that. I tell you, the first guy as I come down this, as I come down these odds here, and, uh, you know, Scheffler at nine, Hovland at 10, Finau 14, Horschel 16, Aaron Wise 16. I'll take you all the way down to your boy Hoagie at 30. You know, Hoagie's one of those guys. He's been on the podcast a couple times. Yeah. And um, he's always talked about, look, you know, get, get me in a position where everybody's got to hit from. Because this is one of those courses, it's not that long. Like, it, you're going to be seeing, like, the ball bouncing on Saturday. Like, man, avoid that divot, you know, because like, everybody's kind of hitting from the same spot. Like, Hoagie likes these places, dude, and he's playing good. Yeah, Hoagie's he's playing good. I think Hoagie has a chance to win. I've bet him. That's one of my bets at 30. Who do you got? I also got Hoagie at 30 to 1. Okay. I mean, he's got, he's got, he's played four events this year. He's got top 13, 13th yeah. place, his worst finish. Um, I think we saw the, pre, you know, we talked about this before. I think we saw like his President's Cup snub mm-hmm. kind of like the fire under his ass. Whereas now I think he's taking every event, like coming in here, taking every event, like as seriously as you can, like a major, you know? So mm-hmm. um, I, I think he wants to prove some people wrong this year. Have another great year. I mean, you know, finishing 10th in the tour championship last year, uh, making the most he's ever made on tour last season. I think he wants to prove a lot of people wrong this year. Not not prove a lot of people wrong, but he just wants to prove that there's, you know, maybe like one guy who selects teams for a certain team. He wants to prove to him that, you know, maybe he made a bad selection. So um, I, I definitely, I do like Tom Hoagie plus 3,000 uh, to win. Uh, he shot 70 or less for 10 straight rounds. So yeah. um, you can't yeah, ask for playing. more consistency he- than that. He's playing good, and and when you start putting a wedge nine eight in your hand into these greens, um, let the irons go to work. Have a good putting week. Hoagie can Hoagie can go. I mean, Aaron Wise will be popular. And he finished he finished third here in twenty twenty. So twenty twenty, yeah, yeah. He he's, he played well here a couple years ago. Aaron Wise will get a lot of play at sixteen. McNeely, you know, there's just there's no way I would ever play him at eighteen. Marikow has come down now a little bit at eighteen. You know, it's interesting. Montgomery is a name. That when I was out in Vegas, uh, I tweeted out Taylor Montgomery is the new best putter on the PGA Tour. Um, and when you think of Taylor Montgomery, you know, he's long off the tee. And, and this is a shorter course. So, you know, he's going to be equalized there a little bit. But I just can't get past the – I just can't get past how great of a putter Taylor Montgomery is. Um, I'll probably play him as a top 20 um, this week for sure. 
um, even though he doesn't have the length quite to his advantage, he is that good of a butter. He, he is now, uh, I think, let's see, a better putter than I'm drawing a blank. Who's the guy that wins? My boy, every year. I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, shoot, we'll get to it. He's, he's in the field this week, too. But uh, Montgomery, <clears throat> he's going to win, folks. <clears throat> this, is a, <clears throat> this is a real player here. Went to UNLV. Um, Harry Higgs was there with him. And he can go bombs it and absolute magic with the putter uh, in his hand. Grio 28 to one. He'll get some play. Thomas Dietrich's playing well at 40. There's that Harmon name that just kind of hangs in my head at 40. Um, I'll probably play Harmon in a top 20 this week. Putnam, not sure he can get it done off the tee. A little tight for him probably. And uh, KH Lee 45. And then the Brendan Todd. Yeah, it's I'm big, well I'm here. Big. Brendan Todd has played well here at 45. What are some names in there that you're looking at? Yeah, I'm also big on Brendan Todd. Also, um, I actually I, I put a bet in for three for three units on Brendan Todd for a top 20 finish at plus 220. Uh, he won here in 2019. He got ninth place at the Fortinet, seventh place at the CJ Cup as well, and he got 11th <clears> place <throat> last year and eighth in 2020 at this event. Yep. Um, so this is like a guy who is, uh, I guess you could say he's a horse for the course. Um, and he's starting out the year playing well. So you're not like questioning where his game is coming in the year. Um, so I definitely like Brennan Todd at plus 220 for a top 24. I bet that for three units. So three wow. wins, 6.6. So it's, it's a bigger play for me. Um, and I also like, you know, I'll sprinkle like a quarter of a, a quarter of a unit on Brennan Todd to win at a plus 5,000 at bet 365. Okay. Um, so yeah, I do like I do like Tom Hoagie. I like Brennan Todd. I also I'm gonna have to go with you know Victor Hovland at eleven to one to win at bet three six five. I mean Victor, you know he shot twenty you know twenty three under par here last year. He got fifth place at the Zozo. Um, he won last year by four strokes over Carlos Ortiz, and he broke the course record. So, um, this is a guy who knows this course well, right? He plays this course well, like almost every time he he tees it up here. And I'll take a guy like, you know, Victor Hovland at better odds than like a Scotty Scheffler, who Scotty, you know, we, we kind of saw his game wane off towards the end of the year. He went on that run like for two months where it was like Scotty Scheffler was prime Tiger Woods, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that's just not going to last forever. So I'm, I'm expecting like a little bit of a drop off this season from Scotty because it's just unsustainable what he was doing. So I definitely like Victor in like, in any matchups against Scotty this week, um, any head to heads, I definitely like Victor over Scotty. Um, I think Victor should be the favorite here. Um, but he probably you know. will be. Yeah. <clears throat> he probably will be. It, Hovland's putter has just let him down to this point. That's, that's the only thing. Um, you know, where is he at? Can he, is he putting as well as he has in the past? Now, good vibes. You go back to a place that, that you know and you've played well and all of a sudden you see a couple go in and off you go so yeah he, he's certainly the class um you know scheffler up there as well more call on these short odds i just can't get to yeah. um this week you know, i actually threw a one more dart i threw <laughs> one more dart for like a quarter of a unit i took a jt poston okay uh plus nine thousand so 90 to one um, because this is a course, this is like a JT posting, like a special course, right? This is whenever he wins, he's going low, right? He, those shooters paradise where you just get out there and it's a birdie fest. He does very well in those events. So I sprinkled JT posting for like a quarter unit, 90 to one, uh, just like a lottery play. I'll definitely be taking him at, you know, his top twenties at like plus three thirty. Um, so yeah, JT posting was another guy that I, that I also played here. T14 here, T14, T21. Um, but I agree, you know, posting one of those guys when he starts filling it up, um, off he goes. Yep. Uh, and it does kind of feel like shorter. Okay. You know, he sees a couple goes in. He's, a, you know, first round leader guy. You wouldn't be surprised, 63 uh, to open up with. You look at the uh, future. I think guy. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, JT Poston, he's been auto, auto first round leader play for me at a course like this. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll definitely be taking JT Poston at, you can get him at 80 to one right now at William Hill, first round leader. 
Um, and that's, Kenley, a guy, that's a guy who's live every every time he tees it up on a course like this, where it's a birdie fest, he's live to be a first round leader. And he's also a guy that can sustain. You know, we've seen him go wire to wire, yeah, which is very hard to do in the PJ. He's a guy who can sustain it for all four rounds and still win the round. So I like JT Post in the first round leader also ninety to one. Henley and Kucher at fifty, Seamus Power at fifty. Power course one last week. You know, you start thinking about keep it in front of you, you know, Henley. Okay. Kucher's playing good. I, I think you got to look at Kucher here uh, as well. You remember this is where it all started for Kucher um, in that tip debacle um, or, <laughs> lack, or lack thereof tip uh, for Mr. Kucher. So 5,000 uh, you know, a good weekend. You know, he would be in the giving spirit um, if he could go out there and make some money. Jason Day, 50 to 1. Mitchell, 55. I think Norn's interesting at 55. Um, you kind of work down these odds and I'll take you down to two guys at 80 that I think are kind of interesting here. And then I'll sprinkle some top twenties on Nick Hardy and Justin Lauer. We'll talk about, you want to talk about putting the golf ball. Jesus, Justin Lauer, this dude can putt, man. I mean, my goodness, he kind of checks out for me here. He's playing good. Uh, nice story where, uh, well, at the time, he, you know, he lost his stroke at the end of the season or lost his card at the end of the season, had to go back down to the Corn Ferry Tour finals to reestablish it and did. Um, I know Justin fairly well. We actually saved, we actually have the same agent. And I think he's playing some great golf right now. Um, you want to start stretching in some big odds, guy that maybe has a chance to win. I would, I would throw Justin Lauer in there at 80 and I would throw Aaron Rye in there at 80. I think this is a good course for Rye, um, guy that's going to keep it in front of him. Um, off the tee, give himself ample looks, and let's have a good putting week. So, you know, we come down here to the 80s. I'll go Lauer and Rye. A couple long shots for you at Mayakoba. Yeah, I mean, I can uh, I can go with Rye there. Um, I can see that. Um, Lauer, I'm just not, like, a huge fan of. Um, just because, you know, whenever I seem to bet him, uh, I just seem to lose. So, um, you know, if we're going down in the eighties, I mean, like I said, JT post, and I'll take a look at Justin Rose, um, last 24 rounds, Justin Lauer strokes gain total is fourth in this field. That's how good his game's been yeah. last 24 rounds. That's how, that's how good he's playing. I mean, that's, you know, that's like Victor Hovland status, yeah. right? And, he, and look, he's a guy, he, you know, he, he, he's a guy that, um, you know, kind of gets it done around and on the greens, but it's a short course. And, you know, I think we've seen the profile of a, of a Justin Lauer win here um, in the past. No different than a Brendan Todd, right, who um, has mm -hmm. played well here, as you mentioned, um, you know, won back in 2020. Kind of the same thing. Brendan Todd can't hit it out of, a, out of a shadow off the tee, but he'll get it done around the green and on the green, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah. So, I mean, if we're talking in the eighties, I'm gonna go with. I'll take Justin Rose, eighty to one for like a quarter unit. Who? Um, Justin Listen, Rose. Justin um, Rose. You know, he's gotta gotta make the comeback at some point. Oh, you know, um, I, I see your boy. Your boy is down at 150 to one. Garrick Higo. No, he's not my boy um, anymore. He's not my boy anymore. You're still living off that money that he made you, though, right? Well, and, listen. Yeah. Here's the deal with Higo. And I don't know this like for certain. When I was in Vegas, I watched Higo hit balls for a while. And, like, I feel like Higo, you know, he got that win. He's come over here in America. And I feel like now, like, he's he's kind of jumped around, a couple teachers. Um, I don't know. It feels – it doesn't feel as, like, just uh, organic, you know, as natural. It feels, like, more calculated and commercial and, and for him. Yeah. And, you know, he's hitting, like, nine irons. The ball's starting – like 10 yards left and drawing back. I'm like, really? He's like that. He always hit that big swing and draw like that. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm Gary Kegel is no longer my boy. Let's just make that official right. uh, on the podcast here this week. Hey, Russell Knox, Russell, can you putt for four rounds? If you can, no. this is no, I know. And he can't play with the lead. So it's, I'll take him a top twenty, but you know, yeah, a, win, a, hey. a, a win ticket. I'm not looking to. I'm not looking to get kicked in the nuts with like ten holes to go, right? <laughs> hey, Hubbard, look, I, I'll, I'll I'll sprinkle um I'll sprinkle a little on Hubbard at one thirty. 
Um, I'll sprinkle a little my my other boy, Austin Smotherman, at 130, who's probably going to be coming on the pod tomorrow with Froggy. Nice. Um, Smotherman's talented player. Hubbard, I'll tell you what, Marcus Hubbard might have the most underrated golf swing on tour. That dude's yeah. smooth. Like, it's it's good and smooth, and he's a ball striker. Um, I'm definitely playing Hubbard in the top 20. As we get down into these longer odds here, I like it. What, what about a little Harris English, 65, 80 to 1, 80 to 1 of drafting is Harris English. Well, you know, is, is he healthy? I mean, can, you know, if Harris English is healthy, I mean, he can compete with this field and, you know. Well, he's played well here in the past. You know, you know this is this is – English, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, he's got two. He's got two fifth place finishes here, um, fifth, fifth in twenty twenty, fifth in twenty twenty one. Now that was his run when he was playing great golf and winning. Yeah. Um, man, I, yeah, I mean, I'll, if, I'll if take him close up plus three ten to win a uh, top twenty finish. Harris English. I mean, I'd expect him right now to be around plus five hundred, um, but I might sprinkle like one unit on Harris English. You know, top twenty because if he's healthy. Especially with the this field, I think he can easily finish in the top twenty because we've seen him play these uh, these birdie fests, you know, very well. Like up in Connecticut, um, what's the one toward the Travelers, right? You know, we've yeah. seen him play very well. You know, win the Travelers um, in, a, in a birdie fest shootout. So those are the kind of courses that Harris, you know, he plays very well if he's healthy. Um, so I think. Definitely a you know a little sprinkle on top twenty you know plus three thirty, um it's probably something I'll, I'll take a bite of here as well because you know when you're getting down to that, that quality of golfer at these numbers, um and there's not many you couldn't really you're not going to pick out twenty guys who are better at golf in this field than Harris English right mm -hmm. it's all about just if he's healthy or not um so you know is it worth the risk of you know placing a half unit on him to finish top twenty at plus three thirty. And for me, it is because I don't think he'd be traveling out of Mexico to play in this event if he wasn't fully healthy, you know. So I do like actually, Harris English plus three thirty. I actually skipped over one of my bets. I need to go back up here to fifty to one, and that's Jason Day. Um, I think Jason Day is is putting some things together here as of late. Uh, eighth at the Shriners, eleventh at the CJ Cup. Uh, his his iron game, folks. All of a sudden is starting to look really, really clean. Um, I mean, he gained five and a half at Shriner's approach in four um, at the CJ Cup. Drove the ball well, putted well. We know he can get up and down. I, I tell you what, um, I, I've, I've put I've put some money on Jason Day to win at 50 as well. That was, I was, I knew I was missing something and that's, uh, and that's the guy. And you look at some guys that are kind of getting if you kind of get into that recent form, right? I like to look at it as long. Okay, here's, you know, big sample size. Okay, so you kind of get, here's your, you know, drivers and your your iron players. But I also like to count. Okay, who's who's coming in relatively hot, and 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 spiking a little bit. Hoagie, we talked about it. I think he leads it off. Number one for me, and Jason Day is number two. I think Aaron Rye is right there with him. Those are three guys I've played. Um, and I think you got to look at Step Straka too a little bit. I think Straka is starting to put some things back together, um, also. So those are the four guys. Recent form coming in: Hoagie, Day, Rye, Straka, that I've all played, and will plan on counting money on Sunday night when one of them comes in and wins. Yeah. So you know, I agree with you. On, I agree with you on Tom. I mean, I put three units on Tom Hoagie plus one sixty for a top twenty finish. I also put one unit on Tom plus 5,000 at William Hill to be the first round leader. Okay. Um, I think he's won a couple first round leaders last season. So, um, sprinkle, Tom, a little on, sprinkle a little on, I got this feeling Jason Day is going to win in the fall. I, I just, yeah, I got a feeling Jason Day is going he's to win. He's definitely been playing better. He's been, he's, he's been playing much better. Um, you know, whereas a few years ago, his game was dead. I think last, last season we saw his game come to life Yeah, a little bit, some stuff that, you know, he's been trying, has been working out. Um, so yeah, I, that Jason day, I could see, I mean, I'm not going to bet it, but I can see it. Like we all want Jason day to win, right? The, the guy is so nice. Um, we all want him to win, but 
Yeah, top 20, you know, first round leader, definitely Tom Hoagie for me. Um, first round leader, definitely uh, Victor Hovland because he goes low at this course every time. And I'm getting him 25 to 1 at, at William Hill to be the first round leader. So I'll definitely take that. I'm not going to play Scotty. I'm not going to play Colin Morikawa um, just because Morikawa, yeah. it's, it's really hard to know where his game is at this point. Um, I think he's really overvalued in this spot. So for first round leader, I'm going to take Victor Hovland at 25 to one. I'm going to take Brendan Todd, six, six, uh, plus 6,000, 60 to one. I'm going to take Tom Hoagie at 50 to one. And I'm going to take, like I said before, JT Poston at 80 to one at William. Right. Okay. All right. Good stuff. There you have it. Those are some, uh, that's good. We sprinkled some names in there. Um, I feel like we haven't had a lot of long shots win this year on the PGA Tour. I think we got one coming here this week. You know, Finau's up there. He hadn't played much golf at all. Scheffler hasn't played much golf at all. I think you're going to see some rust there with some of these, yeah. you know, these bigger names. I, I think there's an opportunity here for one of these guys beyond 50 to come up and make some noise this week. And let's, let's get an 80 to one. Let's, you know, like we did with Higgle, let's get 125 to one. I think we, it'd be nice to get a long shot here this week. And Mike Cohen might just do that. So as this is the last season, the PGA tour will be on this golf course as it turns into a live golf event, because Mike Cova wants to, they want to, they want to play golf, but louder. That's what they want to do in Mexico. I want, they want it to be louder down there. So they went to live golf. Just like louder, like just like the, the person vacuuming in the background is right now. Yeah. I know. This what it's just been one of those days, you know, with the with the with the audio, the microphone. So on that note, beat the bookie. Thank you. We'll do it again soon. See ya. Nice, nice being on. <laughs> My face looks. Really PXG has done it again with the launch of a new lineup of drivers, fairways, hybrids, and irons. The new Gen Five golf clubs deliver significantly increased. MOI, faster ball speeds, longer distances, and tighter dispersions, all coupled with the exceptional feel and sound golfers have come to expect from PXG. Schedule your custom fitting or buy online at pxg.com.